In the season finale, Tiger was able to deliver the message that Abbott's coming right before she dies. This is pretty emotional for Bear, who just lost her best friend, even though they went through some tough times together. But Tiger's sacrifice at least gave the hybrids a head start on preparing for this guy. And one of the things they know they have to do is get the hybrids to safety. So what they're going to do is they're going to send all of the hybrid children along with Bear up to go meet with the Andersons, hoping that the Andersons will take them in. But one person who is not going is Gus. He refuses to. He tells both Amy and Jep, this is my home. I know every inch of this place. Pubba died trying to protect it, and now I'm willing to do the same thing. I'm not letting these people win. And Amy is right there with him. She's given the opportunity to go and sit this one out, but she's not willing to. She wants to take a stand. After all, she's dying anyway. What does it really matter? Before they leave, they prepare everything and say their goodbyes. Amy knows that she's leaving her kids in good hands with Bear. And then Amy tells all of the hybrid kids that she has the sick. And they're forced to say goodbye to their mom. For Wendy, this is really, really difficult to do. She just got Amy back. She doesn't want to leave. She reassures her, though, that it will be okay with Becky. And Wendy reluctantly has to leave her mom behind to get to safety. So Bear and the rest of the hybrids start trekking off into the woods as Gus, the big man, and Amy prepare the area for the last men and Abbott to show up. This includes digging some holes, setting up some booby traps, and the last syringes from Fort Smith. That's one of the weapons they'll definitely be using. Now, the last men aren't as formidable as they used to be. The battle with the animal army took a lot out of them. There's a lot of casualties involved. Abbott wasn't one of them, though, and neither was Johnny. But seeing all the bodies, that was the last straw for Johnny. He actually tried to flee, but as he's trying to leave, he gets caught by his brother. Abbott kind of guilt trips Johnny to coming with him. So the two, along with a few others, hop in a helicopter and head off to Yellowstone to hopefully get the hybrids back. As they're flying over the land, they see a bunch of buffaloes roaming, and that's something that they're not used to. Abbott makes mention of the fact that he can't believe they survived. And Johnny says, well, yeah, nobody's hunting them. The helicopter that's carrying Johnny and Abbott and the rest of the last men sees smoke billowing out of the woods. That was put there by Gus. He wanted to kind of give the last men an idea of where they are. It's also seen by the Andersons. And shortly after they see it, that's when the hybrids finally reach them. The Andersons are good people, and they take all the hybrids in. They can only take them a few at a time up the mountain, so one by one they start making their trek up to safety. Abbott and his men, though, they land the chopper, and they want to go straight for that smoke. But Johnny has other plans. Abbott had handed Johnny a gun, and as Abbott makes his way through the fence, Johnny points it at him. He says, I, I can't let you do this. You have to stop. I can't let you do this anymore. There is no cure. It failed. There is no cure, and there never will be. Everybody knows that except you. So let the kids go. Let the kids go and let me go. I've had enough. Abbott isn't really phased at all by Johnny pointing a gun in his face. He starts preaching to him about how they're built differently and how Abbott's a winner. And people like him, well, that's why they survived. Johnny, though, can't let his brother continue on like this, and he actually pulls the trigger. But Abbott handed Johnny a gun that had no bullets in it. He doesn't get angry. He slowly takes the gun back and tells Johnny, if you want to go, you can go. And Johnny, a little embarrassed, starts walking away. And that's when Abbott shoots him in cold blood. He leaves his brother's body sitting there, telling everybody that they can bury him when they're done. And then he makes his way towards Gus. One by one, though, all the booby traps that they set up start working. Abbott's men go down. Gus, having a real good lay of the land, is really working to their benefit. And slowly, they just start picking them off. But as the three of them are doing the Lord's work, there's one who is feeling left out of the fun. And that's Wendy. Wendy and Bear are the last ones to get on the car to go up the mountain. Wendy's really concerned and she wants to go help out, but Bear says, no, I can't let you do that. It's too dangerous. She's able to get Wendy in the cable car, but when it starts to go up at the very last second, Wendy gets out. She starts making her way towards the forest and she's caught by one of Abbott's lieutenants. Now, luckily for her, Bear also got out. 
and Bear shows off some of that tactical training. But in the process of fighting off Abbott's lieutenant, she drops the little tin that was holding the picture of her and Wendy as a baby, and Wendy picks it up. That's when Bear finally reveals to Wendy who she is, the fact that she was looking for her all this time. Wendy is in such disbelief she doesn't know what to say, so she doesn't say anything. She just continues to make her way through the forest, hoping to help out. Now, the one person everybody is looking for is Abbott. They want to bring him down. And that's when the big man finds him. He was planning on shooting Abbott with a crossbow, but he used his last one. So he's just going to have to use his fists. And the big man is way more powerful than General Abbott. But Abbott has a big mouth, and Jet punching him repeatedly in the face isn't shutting it up. He's able to distract Jet by telling him that they found his wife and child. And up until this point, Tommy had always believed they died. Because Tommy only joined the last men to find his wife and kid. But when he finally pressed the last men for an update, they handed him a bag with bones in it. So he believed that his wife and child were dead. But Abbott tells him no. No, actually, they're home right now. While you were searching for me, they were out there looking for you. Tommy has no idea whether to believe Abbott or not, but this distracts Tommy just enough for Abbott to take advantage of it, hitting Tommy in his reconstructed knee, and Tommy hits his head on a rock and is pretty dazed. But it gives Abbott the opportunity to go searching for Gus, and Tommy's just left to radio Gus and Amy that he's coming. Amy knows that she has to protect Gus, so she puts him under the stairs, just like Pubba used to, even though Gus doesn't want to do it. Amy then sets up with the rifle and waits for Abbott and the rest of his people to show up. And she does a really good job of picking them off, but when it comes time to actually shoot Abbott, her gun jams. It comes at the worst time, because Abbott busts through the door and Amy can't do anything. Her gun just won't work. He starts yelling about how she stole his future and how he's going to find the hybrids, but he's getting closer and closer to her. And finally, she breathes all over him and shows him her twitching pinky. He gets really concerned realizing that she has the sick and he was really, really close to her. But then she makes sure that he gets the sick by grabbing those two syringes and injecting them with it. So there's no chance Abbott survives this. But in all of this, Amy accidentally dropped the cure. And when Abbott throws Amy to the side and injures her, she's not able to get it. So Gus busts through the stairs and he grabs it, running through the woods. That's when Abbott picks up the gun. He takes three shots, and he finally hits Gus. Gus isn't too badly wounded, but Abbott is able to catch up to him and grab the cure. He then goes to finish Gus off, and that's when Jep shows up. But Jep is too far away to actually do anything about it. Abbott points the gun at Jep, and Gus yells at the top of his lungs, Stop! But when Gus did this, he showed off a power he didn't even know he had. Because this summoned all of those buffalo that were roaming in the plains. They come bursting through the forest and they attack Abbott, running him over. It's pretty cool. It's something that nobody really expected or knew Gus could do. But as they're taking it all in, Abbott, with the last energy that he has, grabs a crossbow that's sitting there and shoots Gus. And Gus goes down. Tommy and Bear, who has arrived at this point, start trying to tend to him, but it doesn't look great. Luckily, though, they're able to patch Gus up and put him in a bed. A little while later, though, they do have to say goodbye to Amy. She succumbs to the sick, and she passes away. They have a really nice, touching burial for her. Afterwards, Tommy heads inside the cabin, and he checks on Gus, who is still sleeping, and he decides to listen to Gus's tape. And afterwards, he's completely filled in on everything going on with Birdie. Gus, meanwhile, had slipped off to a dreamlike state where he saw Birdie. He was trekking through Alaska. He saw some tracks. He followed into a cave, and that's where he saw Birdie, freezing. She asked him for help, and that's when he wakes up. With Gus now awake, they tell Gus that they know where Birdie is. And thanks to some papers from Fort Smith that Richard just happened to grab, they not only know what state she's in, they know literally where she's at. So when Gus is all better... They're going to go and search for her. A few weeks later, when Gus is back to 100%, Bear, Gus, Wendy, and Jet start making their trek to Alaska. The rest of the hybrids are going to stay with the Andersons for the time being. But as they left Yellowstone, somebody else showed up. It was Dr. Singh. 
when Dr. Singh realized that he had lost Ronnie for probably ever, he went into a little bit of a rampage. He destroyed the model of Evergreen. Dr. Singh then decided that he couldn't live like this anymore, so he wanted to commit suicide by sitting in the purple flowers. While doing this, he gets a vision of carrying Gus in Alaska to an empty cave. But then he suddenly wakes up. He can't figure out exactly how it happened, and when he checks his pocket, he has the cut-off deer antler from Gus that Abbott gave him. He then remembered that Gus said he lived in Yellowstone, so he headed there. Of course, he found the place empty. But he finds the map that was left behind, so he knows where they're going. Now, just because Abbott is dead doesn't mean there aren't predators out there. Far away, Helen gets an update on Abbott. One of her men tells her what happened, but also brings her the charred remains of Dr. Singh's recorder. He assures Helen that they can transcribe it. When they eventually do transcribe this thing, Helen is going to know everything about Gus and about finding a cure. But as she waits for her men to transcribe it, she feeds her animals. And they're either tigers or really, really mean dogs. Either way, it's probably not great. And that is the end of Season 2 of Sweet Tooth. Thank you so much for getting to this part of the recap. I really appreciate it. Consider subscribing to the channel. Hit thumbs up if you like this. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought this video sucked. Be nice in the comments section. And also, I have a Patreon. I have merch. Go buy a t-shirt. I have plenty of ways you can give me money for this effort that I've made. But just know if you don't do that, I do appreciate at least that you got to this point.